Election day is Tuesday, November 5th. We're sitting down with Greenwich's candidates for Board of Selectmen and the Board of Education and asking them about the important issues and goals if elected. Over my 15 years of being a Greenwich public school parent, I've been very involved with my kids' schools, as a lot of parents are in Greenwich. Um, I've volunteered everything from running a book fair to, you know, fluoride rinse to doing child check and safety checks. Um, to being PTA president. I was PTA president for two years at Riverside School, which is my child's neighborhood elementary school, and I was also PTA president at Greenwich High School for a year. In addition, I was on the RTM, which is our representative town meeting. Uh, I was on the RTM for 13 years, so I voted on 13 education budgets. And the reason I joined the RTM originally was because I felt my demographic, which was families with school-aged children, was underrepresented. Um, so I became involved in both government and, and in the schools. So I am running for the Board of Ed because I feel like I have some institutional knowledge of both the Board of Ed meetings as well as the RTM process and the town budget process. And then I can add some value and advocate for resources for, the, um, for our students and our teachers. We need to do something about that, and I am in favor of the feasibility study, which was just approved by the Board of Ed, to accelerate a $100,000 study to see what can be done. Um, with respect to, uh, we have other schools that are underutilized. Um, the two most notable ones are Parkway, which is in our back country of Greenwich, and also North Street, which is in mid country. Um, but I think there are things we can do at those schools to. Um, use those idle classrooms and to, to increase achievement, whether it be adding preschool classrooms or potentially have those be schools of choice where other um, school children could go there, from whether they be overcrowded schools or racially imbalanced schools. I think there are things we can do as a community, but on our own timetable and with parent buy-in and community support. Everyone likes their neighborhood school. No one wants to leave, but there are some people who, who would leave if it was a program or something that appealed to them educationally that was um, a good choice for their students. So I think facilities utilization is an ongoing issue. Our district strives to have an 85 to 95 percent capacity rate at the schools. We're not there at all schools. But we have to remember that kids don't come in little packages, you know. <laughs> we have to take what we have. Um, the racial balance issue, I think it's important that we work with the state as a partner. Um, we work with them to submit a plan, and then we work to implement it over time. Thankfully, redistricting was taken off the table. Nobody thought that was a good idea. It makes no sense to bus kids all over town. We're a big town, um, and it doesn't make sense to put kids on a bus for a long period of time. I think we see it all around us in our society, and I think as a district and as a community and as a society, we need to do more. In our Greenwich schools, we have extensive social and emotional learning curriculums at all levels. Um, we teach our youngest children how to behave. We teach, uh, you know, our, as adults, we should role model for our children. I think there's always more that needs to be done. And when we lose a student, like we did on the first day of school, it's a tragedy that we all, our heart breaks for the family, and we all stop and think about what it is we need to do better. I know I'm more mindful of what my kids are doing, particularly on social media, because when kids have issues that run deep, we don't always see what's going on, we don't always hear what's going on, and while we want our students to know that they can always go to an adult, that doesn't always happen. So we need to just be careful, we need to be kind to one another, we need to look out for one another, and I think there are more programs that we could put in place. Um, we do a names day at Greenwich High School that's coming up in a couple weeks. It's run by the Anti-Defamation League. It's always a good start, but it's for freshmen only. And I would like to see more programs. Our board this past year, because we've had these issues with racial balance and um, if facilities utilization, there's some differences in our board member styles have come out. Um, at the end of the day, I know every board member has the best interests of the student at heart, but we have to remember that we hired the superintendent, and we've had seven or eight superintendents in the 15 years I've been a parent in the public schools, and I think that's impacted our achievement. I think leadership stability is really important. I think it's imperative we get it right this time. And the current Board of Education was the search committee for Dr. McCursey. There were no outsiders. They voted unanimously to hire him, and I think it's important that they support him. 
Greenwich has a high expectations for its district. And the achievement gap is worrisome. Uh, Connecticut has one of the highest achievement gaps in the nation. I think um, our achievement gap, we were improving it, and then this past year we slipped a little bit. So we have a 30% achievement gap between the performance of students who qualify for free and reduced lunch and those that don't. And often um, what happens is the research shows that those gaps start early in life. And so I think one of the strategies is to ensure a higher quality preschool experience for those students. And if they don't have that preschool experience when they get to school, to identify um, the gaps and remediate. Um, you know, high quality K through three early literacy programming. That's one of the areas of focus for the Greenwich Board of Ed. And I think it's important that if you can close those gaps early, um, you're gonna have success. I am worried about voter turnout for a municipal election. I, in fact, was not an endorsed candidate for from the Democratic Party in Greenwich. I petitioned to get on the ballot because I am passionate about improving education in Greenwich. I have direct first-hand experience. I have students who are currently in school. I'm connected. Um, so I know, I have a sense of what needs to be done. Um, and I would just say to Greenwich voters that please come out and vote on November 5th because it's a contested election. Your vote matters. You may not think so if you don't have kids in public school or you've moved on or your kids are in private school, but it does matter because the quality of our schools is important for all residents.